right now in your pocket, on your desk, in data centers across continents, there's a processor architecture so pervasive it powers nearly everything you touch. It doesn't come from Intel. It doesn't come from AMD. It comes from ARM, the architecture behind most of the world's computing. 99% of smartphones run on ARM. So does Apple's entire Mac lineup and the fastest supercomputer on Earth. But ARM doesn't make chips. They've never manufactured a single processor. This is the story of how a small British startup with 12 engineers outmaneuvered Intel and transformed the semiconductor industry, the Cambridge Rebellion. The story begins in Cambridge, England in 1983. Acorn Computers was building a new machine for the BBC, but existing processors were either too expensive or too power hungry. Intel's chips were designed for desktop PCs complex and power intensive. Motorola's weren't much better. Acorn made a bold decision, design their own processor. The team was small, just 12 engineers with no silicon expertise and no fabrication plants. What they had was a revolutionary idea from Berkeley and Stanford called RISC, Reduced Instruction Set Computing. While Intel built processors with hundreds of complex instructions, RISC took the opposite approach. Keep the hardware simple and fast and let software handle the complexity. In 1985, they completed the first ARM chip, the Acorn RISC machine, or ARM-1, where Intel's processors consumed significant power and generated heat, the ARM-1 was remarkably efficient. Legend has it the first prototype worked without a power supply, running on electrical leakage alone. Whether entirely true or not, the chip was undeniably elegant and efficient. But Acorn was a computer company, not a chip company. In 1990, they spun out ARM as a separate entity, Advanced Risk Machines. Twelve employees, a desk in a barn, and a business model that would reshape the industry, the licensing revolution. ARM made a defining decision. They wouldn't manufacture or sell chips. They would license the designs. Intel designed, manufactured, and sold chips complete vertical integration. But that meant competing with potential customers. ARM did the opposite. They became the architect who draws blueprints, letting others build the houses. Apple licensed ARM. So did Samsung, Qualcomm, and eventually nearly every major chip maker. The model was straightforward, an upfront licensing fee, plus a small royalty on every chip sold, pennies per chip. But when you're selling billions, those pennies add up. And because ARM wasn't competing with its customers, an ecosystem emerged, design tools, software libraries, operating systems optimized for ARM. The network effect took hold, the mobile revolution. In 1993, Apple was developing a handheld device called the Newton. They needed a processor powerful enough to be useful but efficient enough to run on batteries. Intel's chips consumed too much power. ARM was ideal. The Newton failed, but the partnership didn't. When the mobile revolution arrived, ARM was positioned perfectly. The first ARM-powered Nokia phone launched in 1997, then came the iPhone in 2007. Every major smartphone that followed used ARM processors. The reason was simple, power efficiency. A laptop can tolerate a hot, power-hungry processor. A phone cannot. ARM delivered both performance and battery life. Intel tried with Atom processors and subsidies, but couldn't match ARM's efficiency. By 2016, Intel exited mobile entirely. By 2020, ARM processors powered 99% of smartphones, with 5 billion chips shipping every quarter. But mobile was just the beginning. Intel vs. ARM the Great Inversion For decades, the computing world was divided. ARM ruled mobile. Intel ruled everything else, laptops, desktops, servers, data centers. If you needed serious computing power, you bought Intel. But ARM's efficiency wasn't just useful in phones, it reduced power costs in massive data centers. When you're running hundreds of thousands of servers, power efficiency becomes a competitive advantage. Amazon moved first. In 2018, they announced Graviton custom ARM processors for AWS, offering better performance per watt at lower costs. 
Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud followed with their own ARM-based infrastructure. Then came Apple's announcement in June 2020, Apple's bombshell. For 15 years, every Mac ran on Intel processors. Now Apple was switching to ARM with their own custom chips. The industry was skeptical. ARM chips worked in phones, but professional computers, video editing, software development, music production, surely these required Intel. The M1 launched in November 2020. The M1 exceeded expectations faster, cooler, and dramatically more efficient than Intel chips. MacBook Airs without fans outperformed Intel-based MacBook Pros. The software transition through Rosetta 2 was seamless. Subsequent generations, M1 Pro, M1 Max, M2, M3, M4, each brought more capability. Apple's highest-end chips now compete with desktop workstation processors. The professional market Intel had dominated for decades was shifting to ARM. Microsoft took notice. Windows on ARM suddenly became a priority. The NVIDIA deal that wasn't. In September 2020, NVIDIA announced a $40 billion deal to acquire ARM, potentially the largest semiconductor acquisition in history. NVIDIA's reasoning was strategic. AI was exploding, and data centers needed massive computing power. If NVIDIA owned ARM, they could design complete systems with CPUs and GPUs working together. But the deal faced immediate opposition from Qualcomm, Google, Microsoft, and Chinese regulators. Global regulators questioned whether NVIDIA could keep ARM neutral. Would competitors still get equal access to designs? For 18 months, NVIDIA made concessions and commitments. It wasn't enough. In February 2022, the acquisition collapsed. Three months later, ARM filed for an IPO. In September 2023, they went public with a valuation of $54 billion higher than NVIDIA's offer. The market had validated that an independent ARM was more valuable. The AI and cloud era. Today, ARM's reach extends across cloud computing, artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles, and edge computing. Amazon's Graviton processors power significant portions of AWS, offering better performance than comparable Intel chips at lower cost. Cloud providers began shifting to ARM-based designs for better performance per watt. Microsoft has Azure Cobalt, Google has Axion, even NVIDIA, after the acquisition failed, embraced ARM more deeply with Grace, an ARM CPU designed for AI workloads that pairs with NVIDIA's GPUs to create complete AI systems. The Risk V Threat ARM's dominance faces a new challenge. Risk V, an open source processor architecture. Risk V offers a royalty free alternative, attracting interest from companies and countries seeking more control over their designs. China is investing heavily, developing Risk V processors for everything from embedded systems to data centers, partly to reduce dependence on Western technology. Western companies are watching closely. Google is experimenting with Risk V. Intel is investing in its development. ARM's response has been aggressive licensing, flexible terms, and continuous innovation. So far, Risk V has gained traction in embedded systems and IoT, but ARM still dominates smartphones, tablets, laptops, and increasingly, servers. The next decade, ARM now sits at the center of modern computing shaping systems from phones to cloud servers. Apple has abandoned Intel. Amazon, Microsoft, and Google design their own ARM chips. NVIDIA builds ARM-based AI platforms. The advantages are clear, performance per watt, customization, cost efficiency. ARM's licensing model enables innovation companies can design exactly the chip they need. Apple optimizes for Mac users, Amazon for cloud workloads, Qualcomm for smartphones, all using the same underlying architecture. 12 engineers in Cambridge designed an architecture so efficient and flexible that it now powers the device in your pocket the laptop on your desk, the cloud servers running your applications, and the AI systems processing your data. From phones to supercomputers, 
ARM is everywhere in architecture most people have never heard of, running the world they live in.